Greetings YouTube, Simon here and today I am starting a brand new playthrough. This is Grim Dawn, a fantastic action role playing game currently available on PC but as far as I'm aware it's also coming soon to console as well. So if you have not played this game before I recommend that you do. This is a fantastic opportunity to get into the game. A new expansion has recently been released though I don't actually own it yet myself uh, but it's not necessary because we are just going to be starting. I'm going to be beginning with a brand new character. I have played this game before. I have played this game even on this channel. We've done live streams and whatnot. But since I want to actually be playing along with you guys here, maybe doing a bit of a walkthrough as we go, explaining the decisions that I make and the paths that I take through the game, I thought it would make sense to begin from the start. So I've gone ahead and deleted my characters since it has been a while since I last played anyway. Uh, we're going to be starting absolutely from scratch here and hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this one. Uh, if you've not played an action role playing game before, then this is a great opportunity to do so because Grim Dawn happens to be one of the best. So we're going to go ahead and select the create character button. And as always, guys, if you enjoy the walkthrough, enjoy the episode, please do leave a like and make sure you're subscribed to my gaming channel. And yeah, if we get enough likes, I'll continue to pump out these episodes. All right, then. So as we click create character here, we're going to put in a name. And I'm just going to go for the uh, channel name of Fuzzfinger. Uh, we can select our gender. And then we have two options, Veteran and Hardcore mode. Veteran is an increased difficulty mode, uh, which you can begin right from the start. Uh, and the bonus for choosing Veteran mode is that, first of all, you get a 10% experience bonus, which is brand new to, I think, the latest expansion. Though all players will get it, regardless of whether you have that expansion or not. But also you will get more enemy spawns. Next, which means that you also get more experience because you're killing more things. Now, I actually recommend you don't choose veteran mode because in my experience, they buffed it recently and it's actually very challenging, which is fine. But if your goal as mine is, is to actually progress through the game, at least initially, then you're going to be slowed down drastically in veteran mode. And your experience per hour is also going to be slower. So we can select this later on once we've got some gear. But for now, I'm going to leave this disabled. Although, even normal mode, normal difficulty, is uh, buffed to some degree as well recently. So even that is more challenging, in my view, than the previous veteran mode. So don't think we're going to be getting off scot-free. Uh, there is still going to be some difficulty involved. And hardcore mode, for those of you unfamiliar with the action RPG genre, uh, is permanent death mode. So only select this if you're absolutely sure you can handle it. It doesn't matter whether you played for 5 minutes or 500 hours. Once your character dies, that's it. You cannot play it again. And you'll lose anything that it had equipped, etc. So, yep. Yeah, uh, keeps you on the edge of your seat, but I'm just going to be going for normal and softcore, as it's colloquially known. So let's go ahead and create our character here. And as you can see, we didn't select a class. We didn't select anything other than our gender and our name. Uh, that's because most of the character customization takes place during the game itself. Uh, and in terms of customization, that's going to involve the class and also the equipment that we wear, which will change how we look. Okay, so don't worry about these other options for now. Uh, once you're sure you're happy, we're going to select the start button. And I'm going to skip through any cutscenes that play because you can watch those yourself. I'm just going to be focusing on gameplay. And let's get into it. Grim Dawn. Here we go. Once we first begin the game then, we start at Devil's Crossing. Actually on the outskirts of Devil's Crossing. And we can see we have a quest here that we can accept immediately. Now of course we do start at level 1, which you can see down here in the bottom uh, part of the screen along with this red bar here which represents our total and current health and this green bar which represents our total and current energy now there's a load of other stuff that we can see as well but i'll talk about that a little bit later for now though uh, one thing i will mention is you mention is if you want to bring up your character panel hit either the letter c or i on your keyboard and you can see your current equipment your current inventory which we can expand later on and also various stats over on the right hand side. Now there's some other options you can select over here as well. So you can see various other stats if you want to. And 
yeah, we, I'm not going to show you anything else, because I don't want to overburden you with information. So let's just go ahead and select the NPC over here, Hangman Jarvis, and he's going to give us our first quest. So quests are represented by these yellow exclamations above character heads, which you've probably seen from various other games. And once we go through the dialogue, we can get those quests accepted into our active quest log. So we're going to select the option with the green tick next to us, of course. I'll be on my way then. And that's going to pop that quest over there into our active log. We can also click this little icon which pops up once we move the mouse cursor over to this area. Uh, and that will hide that window if it gets in the way, which it won't be at the moment. But later on when this log is absolutely filled with quests, then you may wish to do so. Now, we don't need to come over here right now. But you can see that if we do, there's a broken bridge. We can repair this later once we've collected 6 scrap and 3,000 iron bits. Uh, we'll actually do that towards the end of the act. So no need to rush to do it immediately. But now we're going to make our way over into Devil's Crossing itself through the Iron Gate. Uh, this green icon incidentally above NPC heads uh, just indicates they have something to say to you. That you haven't heard yet, but that they don't have a quest of any kind. So, over by the main gate, we have Kerrick. He's a salvage dealer. And what that means is we can buy stuff and sell stuff with Kerrick. Uh, right now we can't buy a whole lot because we don't have any money. But later on, of course, we will. And we're going to go ahead and speak to Captain John Bourbon. Oh, well, just before we do that, I'll mention that if you go over here, um, if you've pre-purchased or purchased various expansions and optional items and whatnot, any extra items that are available to you uh, will be available from these guys right here. So they'll always give you this illusion be gone. That just removes any transmog that you have set to change the way your gear looks. So we're going to select where can I find burial hill and then I'll find what's reanimating those corpses. Now in terms of the build that we're going for, I'm going to be building uh, based on the tactician class and that's a really fun class. Not only is it decent at end game, but you're going to be slaughtering things as we go through the various uh, leveling aspects of the game as well which you'll see hopefully in due course but for now we can't do a whole lot all we have is a basic attack incidentally you won't have to go ahead uh, and copy my build if there's another build you wanna uh, you know go with that you found on the internet or whatever then by all means still follow my videos if you want to see where to go for quests uh, etc but then just make sure you put points into the skills that you want to use as opposed to where I'm putting them. But if you don't know what I'm talking about or don't know anything about what build you want to go for, then I recommend you stick with what I'm going to do and you'll have a whole lot of fun with it, I assure you. Uh, right then, so we're going to start by heading out into Lower Crossing. Now, I contemplated whether or not to edit videos, uh, you know, where I'm just going around killing things and exploring and just showing the good bits in terms of quests and stuff. But then I thought, no, if you're going to play along with me, which is what I recommend you do, then you can just kind of have this video running in the background. And then when there's important stuff that's going on, such as we found a quest monster, quest NPC, there's an important item that's dropped, I've leveled up and want to spend skill points, then I will always commentate and you guys know to actually pay attention to what's happening on the screen. Uh, that way you haven't got to keep pausing and unpausing the video if you want to play along with me. You can just kind of keep it running either on a second screen or on a second device such as a tablet or what have you. So let me know if this method works out well guys as we go through the game here. And you know we can always make changes if need be. So as you can see we leveled up to level 2. And if we hit uh, S on the keyboard then that's going to bring up, to, uh, bring up our class selection screen. And you can see there's a few classes we can select from. Some of these classes may not be available to you if you don't own any of the expansion packs. But that's okay because I believe the classes I am going to be selecting, which are the soldier uh, class first of all, uh, are going to be, you know, only selectable. Well, well are going to be selectable to uh, any of you, regardless of, uh, you know, what expansions and that you own. Uh, we're also going to be going for the Inquisitor class as well. So, right now we can only select one class, either Inquisitor or Soldier, which are the 
two that we're going to be going for in total. Uh, and then at level 10 we can select our second class. And to begin with, we're going to select Inquisitor. Right, now, we've got a whole, you know, set of icons in front of us. This might look confusing, but it really isn't. We've got really just three kinds of icons that you need to worry about, or three kinds of buttons. We've got these circle buttons, the square ones in the main pane, and then this square button down at the bottom. Now, the one down at the bottom is uh, not an actual ability or anything. It's just something we can keep putting points into to level up. And it will not only increase those stats that you can see there each time we level it up, but it will also give us access eventually to these later tiered abilities. So once we go ahead and invest one point, which I'm going to do now, it then unlocks these three abilities here for us. This is tier one. Now, we don't have these abilities by default. They're just unlocked and we can invest points into them, which is what we're going to do. And incidentally, each time we level up, we will get three skill points to spend as we wish. So, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put a point into ranged expertise here. Now, as you can see, this is circular, which means it's a passive ability. It's not one we have to assign to our hotbar. If it was a square ability, it would be an ability we have to assign to our hotbar. But it isn't, so we won't. <laughs> Uh, right, and as you can see, we still have one ability left, and we want to spend points next into Bursting Round, but we can't because we still need four additional points in the class, so we're going to start doing that now, and we're going to put our final points into the main class tree here. So, next time we level up, we'll be able to put the next three points into our class tree, and then we'll be able to unlock Bursting Round. So the ability ranged expertise that we just got is going to add piercing damage uh, which should work immediately but it's going to be extra effective once we get ranged weapons which we don't yet have so again if you ever want to open up your skill window just hit s on the keyboard uh, so just to clarify sorry uh, that that ability we've unlocked will only work with ranged weapons but we are going to be getting a ranged weapon soon because even if one doesn't drop we'll be able to purchase one from the vendor that I just introduced you to a moment ago. Right, so the general pattern for making our way through the story here and completing the quest as we go is to make sure we explore everywhere. Now, as far as I'm aware, uh, unlike some other action role-playing games you may be familiar with, the maps are not randomly generated per se. Okay, the general layouts are, uh, tend to be fixed here in Grim Door. Now there are some random elements such as where caves spawn um, but on the whole the maps are generally going to be a similar layout uh, in your game as they are in mine. So it should give you you know, uh, an easy way to follow along. If you want to open your map you can press M on the keyboard and you can also see your mini map in the top right hand corner which you can also hide as well if preferred. So we're just going to backtrack a little bit, make sure that we're not missing anything. We only have the one quest at the moment, which is to enter the cave uh, under Burial Hill, which isn't even the section that we're in. But it's also important to explore, even if you're confident there's no quests nearby. And the reason for that is, of course, we are just going to be getting experience by killing enemies. And of course, awesome loot. As with every other action role-playing game that I've ever played, Loot is the exciting and addictive feature of the game. Uh, now there are various types of loot. Right now we only have this grey boring loot. But there's also magic loot, rare loot and epic loot as well. Uh, of course some of the epic... Oh and legendary. And epic and legendary loot is loot that we're not going to be seeing anytime soon. So once again we've levelled up this time to level three and as I mentioned we want to get to bursting round so we're going to go ahead and invest our three points into the inquisitor tree now these aren't wasted points even though we're not getting abilities because as you can see they are boosting our stats as well okay so next time we level we'll be able to go straight on and invest into bursting round which is also a passive ability so one of the good things about this build that I'm choosing here for us uh, is that it's not only very very powerful which it is 
it's also very simple to play. As you can see already, the abilities that I'm investing skill points in are passive abilities. Now, while there will be active abilities that we'll be choosing later on, they are few and far between compared to other builds. So, expect a nice simple build to play, but also one that's going to offer a lot of ownage. Uh, even at endgame, this is going to be definitely a viable build to play. Though it will be somewhat gear dependent later on, though not initially. Uh, outside of the fact that we do need to get hold of some uh, ranged weapons. In particular, one-handed guns. Oh, one thing I should mention is that this ranged expertise we put a point into allows us to dual wield one-handed guns. That alone makes it a super powerful ability. So I'm going to try and find some iron bits here. Uh, so we can start buying some one-handed weapons. Iron bits are the currency for the game. The money. As you can see we have 30 right now. Uh, which will not be enough to buy any weapons unfortunately. So until we get any one-handed guns. We're just going to use any other equipment that we might be able to find. Uh, now this guy that spawned. As you can see has stars around his health bar. And also... He has a star next to his name. Uh, well, a star above his head, but only if he's not highlighted or when he first spawns. I can't seem to get that to show up. Uh, anyway, that means he's an elite enemy. Barog the Blooded. So it's a little bit harder, but we'll give better loot, as you can see. And also more experience when he dies. So let's go ahead and take all that awesome loot and see what we've got here. So we can go ahead and equip the magic two-handed sword. Oh, by the way, that log that we looted earlier uh, is a lore item. And if you right-click it, you'll get some experience. Okay, 25 in this case. Oh, before we go any further, head over to the options menu and make sure that auto loot materials is selected. That's a great option that was introduced recently uh, in a patch. And you're going to be getting a lot of components that drop on the floor. In fact, let me just check. I did show you the... Yep. It is that one. Uh, you get a lot of component, oh, a lot of components that drop on the floor. Uh, and you won't have to click them manually with that option selected. Tonic of Bending is your health potion. Just make sure that it's assigned on your hotbar. Uh, it should be by default anyway. If you're playing veteran mode, then be warned. You will be going through a lot, a lot of those potions. If you're playing normal mode, as I am, then you'll probably find you'll end up with far more than you actually need of those things. But you're always welcome to switch through to veteran mode if you find the game too easy at any point. And, of course, you can switch back if it becomes too difficult. So we've got two more lore pages there. We'll select them and level up from that little process. So we're going to go ahead and invest those points into Bursting Round. Okay, once again that is a ranged technique so we won't be seeing the benefit of that. As soon as we get a gun though, uh, we are going to be absolutely blitzing our way through everything. Uh, you can be lucky and get a gun pretty much immediately. Seems the game hates me right now and doesn't want me to uh, show you just how powerful these passive skills are that we're learning. But we'll just continue on exploring the entire map as we go. It is important to explore, guys, because if you don't, you can very quickly find the enemies will start to outlevel you. One of the aspects of pretty much any action role-playing game is the fact that they are quite grind-heavy. But that's okay, because the prospects of loot upgrades keeps things fresh and just makes things, you know, fairly addictive and enjoyable. Uh, though I'm sure many of you watching this are familiar with various other action while playing games such as Path of Exile uh, and Diablo and games of that nature. I mean, I love these games, I really do. Uh, Diablo in particular has always been one of my favourites. Diablo 2 back in the day, oh, did I play that game for many hundreds if not thousands of hours. Uh, and even Diablo 3 is a game that I've played a lot and still do. New season out on Diablo 3 next week. So, 
probably be taking a break from Green Dawn to play that when it happens. Uh, anyway, guys, over here, we have this dude sitting down. And this is Faldis. And we can speak to him. And you have a choice here. Uh, you can send him back. Or you can open a rift gate. And we're going to go ahead and open a rift gate. And then click the tick button. Uh, and if we open up J here. Then you can see the certain factions. This is where we can earn reputation for extra rewards. And we have two types of factions. We have friendly factions such as Devil's Crossing. And we have hostile factions such as Beasts and Ethereals. Uh, in order to build up faction with Beasts and Ethereals. Or pretty much any negative faction. We have to go ahead and kill enemies of that faction. And as we kill enough enemies then we'll reach the next level with them. Uh, and as you can see here once we reach the spy status with Beasts. Then we'll get extra spawns, which means extra experience and extra loot. And as we get to Hated, then we get additional hero spawns, which are those elite enemies, like the one we already fought a few minutes ago. And then finally, we can get to the uh, final Nemesis status, which actually unlocks Nemesis spawns, which are awesome boss creatures as part of that faction for even better rewards. Uh, and so too for the friendly factions as well, but obviously uh, you get, you know rewards that are appropriate to friendly factions so first thing we're going to do now is head over to this little red icon you can see on the mini map that is a rift and rifts are effectively waystones or waypoints in Grimdorm so you can now see that we can head back to Devil's Crossing by using this rift and that is permanently unlocked so we now have fast travel over to Burial Hill uh, whenever we wish to use it and we'll just go ahead and sell some of this stuff these little bits here are components they're the things that are auto looting for us now that we selected the option so we'll just keep those in our bag for now incidentally if you need to head back to town to sell stuff then you can also open a personal rift if you don't have a waypoint nearby and you can do that with this little button here this red icon or just hit the L shortcut key on the keyboard and the good thing is is once you've opened a personal rift it will stay open until you open another one so you can keep going to and from town uh, without losing your position there but we don't need to go back to town right now so we won't use it and as we head up here uh, there's a little green crystal on the floor that is an aether crystal so we'll go ahead and attack it and that will drop the Aether Crystal for us to go ahead and loot them. That will come in use for later on for various things. And you can also see a little star on the map. Uh, the star will generally indicate either a tough enemy or in our case where we need to head to for a quest. So generally stars are good things that you want to go to. Uh, we are going a little bit out of the way here but I do want to kill these enemies. And I still don't have a one-handed weapon. We'll grab the Aether Crystal here as well. Yeah, if you guys following along have picked up a gun at all. Then congrats on that. A one-handed gun in particular would be better. Uh, you'll certainly be seeing how those abilities we've been learning. Are just making short work of everything. Right now... I'm having to use this two-handed weapon, which isn't doing, you know, too bad a job, actually. We are planning through enemies here at a nice pace. So, we're going to continue on levelling up our bursting round. And once it gets to 20% chance to be used here, remember it's a passive ability, that's 20% chance each time you attack uh, with a gun. Uh, then that percent chance to increase won't happen anymore. Uh, but the other parts of the skill will continue to improve as we level it up. Although 20% chance is quite a high chance to proc anyway. So yeah, it's a very nice ability to have. And we're getting close to that cave entrance now. Although these enemy spawns are becoming quite relentless. Now, if you do have a one-handed gun, then this next area is going to be a lot easier for you. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to head back using a personal rift here. 
to see if there's any chance we can purchase a one-handed gun. Even if it's just a rubbish one, those abilities that we've been learning, those passive abilities, will help uh, improve it. So if we head over to ranged weapons here. Uh, yes, we can in fact purchase a scrap metal howdar. Uh, we don't have enough for that one. This one's slightly better. Okay, let's go ahead and buy that. We'll sell our great axe. Now, even though it says it's got more damage per second on this axe, remember those abilities that we've just unlocked uh, are going to help us with the gun here. So now we have those abilities which are going to proc automatically as we fire with our weapon. And if we get another gun, then we can also, because of only those abilities, dual wield for even more damage. So now that we've entered the cave, the quest is update, updated. We need, need to kill Keyzog, the reanimator. Look at that. That skill procced and just destroyed everything in sight. Honestly, guys, once we get this build going very quickly, I don't mean like later, then you're just going to see how much fun it is. Right, there's Killzog. So we're going to focus on him. And when that skill procs, then it should kill any enemies around him as well. Uh, especially if you're playing on veteran mode, make sure you stay out of any poison on the floor that appears. You'll know when the skill procs as well because you get a little animation of uh, a fire effect. Just like that. So our standard attack does about 18 to 22 points of damage. That proc does over 120. So yeah, very nice indeed. And there it goes. Look at that, a nice simple fight. So what did we get here? Well, we got a gun. Though it does require cunning of 83, which we're not quite there yet. Though we could actually put points into cunning. I'll talk about points a little bit later. Uh, we'll also get cunning naturally as we invest points into our inquisitor tree. As you can see, we get four points per level. Uh, but we have to actually put those points here. Uh, and I believe we might get cunning points for the soldier tree as well a little bit later on. So let's just go ahead, shall we, for now. And uh, pop points into cunning. Uh, we will be putting points into both cunning and physique as we go through here. So we just want to get to 83 for now. There we go, two points is sufficient. Let's just swap those around. I don't, I don't think it makes much of a difference. Uh, we're now dual wielding guns. Now, before we leave the cave, there is something else that's very important you can find here. And that is a devotion shrine. So head down to the bottom level. Uh, we'll go ahead and defeat the Aether Crystals with our new dual wielding guns here. And we have this ruined shrine. Now, we're going to use one of our ether crystals to activate this shrine. Uh, and that's going to give us a devotion point as well as some loot. So first of all, we'll check our loot here. Uh, got a bit of a decent jacket here. We'll throw that on. And nothing else is really important. Right, now, if we open the skill pane again, you can see this devotion tab. Click that, or click it, I should say. And you can see we've got points available. One. Now, you get one point per devotional shrine that we encounter and activate. Uh, and because we're going for a particular, you know, ranged set of attacks, I'm going to go ahead and select the top ability here. And this is going to give us access to certain trees in the devotion window. So that's cost us one of our points. And then when we next get a point, we can start investing in these trees. And I'm going to begin with the sailor's guide over here. But I'll talk about that uh, a little bit later on. Okay, so we're going to head back up to the upper level here. And hopefully now the enemies are going to be falling even faster. We're dual wielding one-handed guns. And of course our passive abilities will be helping us on our way also. And we'll just continue with the exploration. Making sure that every nook 
has been explored uh, and so that we don't have to walk all the way back around here I'm going to head back to town momentarily and then we'll use the main rift and that'll bring us just to the other side of where we've been exploring but before we do that let's go ahead and hand in the quest and their numbers are a creature was doing need some time to plan our strategy so handing in quests tends to give you experience along with uh, various other things as well. Uh, right, so we've got the next quest off him, along with a whole bunch of other quests that have opened up here. And if we just head round to the side, Barnabas will have a quest for us, and he wants us to find Scrap. Now, Scrap is a component that drops off enemies. As you can see, we have one already, but we're going to need five for the quest. Now, you might already have had uh, five scrap drop for you if you've been very lucky. So feel free to hand that question immediately if you did. And once we spoke to that guy, we can make our way into town. Speak to Faldis. This is the guy that we rescued earlier on. And then we can speak to Sybil. What are you? Uh, if you head up here... Then you can access your personal stash if you want to store things out of your inventory because it's full but you don't want to get rid of it. And then if we just head over into the upper corner of town, Greetings, we've got this child. other introductory I'm quest. To see that my knowledge of, I'm afraid that troubled mem my knowledge of sp troubled mem Okay, now, apart from the 100 experience you get, this unlocks uh, Sedina who is a spirit guide and for the cost of iron bits you can remove points that you've invested in your various skills now you can't actually remove points from the main trees here and you can't unlearn the actual classes that you've selected so just bear that in mind that is the limitation there uh, let's go ahead and continue putting points into bursting round and we're going to head back out into the wild or oh, before we do that i think there's one more person we can speak to here Welcome yep. to my workshop. Kasparov. You don't remember anything. You'll be looking. Right. Did and Kasparov wants for ether fra uh, crystals. So if you've got those, you can hand it in straight away, just as I have. Very good. I'm sure a little... ah, we have to say and his next quest will be to find his apprentice. Okay. So that's everybody spoken to. Let's head back to the main rift now, the lower crossing rift. And continue on with our exploration. And now we're going to be literally blitzing through everything in terms of enemies here. Honestly guys, this is such a fun build to use. You're going to really enjoy it. Uh, we're going to head over to the right though. And yeah, it does have AoE effects as well. Look at that, see? How we just destroyed everything. Now the poison can be nasty, but especially on veteran mode. So... Don't be too concerned about the poison pools early on if you're on normal mode. But if you're on veteran mode, you'll definitely want to stand out of those, okay? Because honestly, guys, that updated veteran mode is rough. It really is. Which is why I recommend normal mode. Ah, oh, look, a secret cave. Oh, I love it. This is so much fun, guys. I know I keep harping on about it, but I really mean it. You're going to have a blast if you're going with the uh, class selection that I'm going with, of course. If you are going for a different build, guys, please do let me know. Or if you're not even following along with the walkthrough, you're just watching. Uh, but play the game as a different build. Different class combinations. Then do share those in the comment section. I'd be very interested to find out what you guys are going for. Uh, soon, in fact now, let's go ahead and stop picking up those white items. If we hit this little ring icon here, we can actually hide white items on the floor. So that we don't see them. Obviously you won't pick them up to sell them either. Uh, just over here we have our next restored... Oh, this is the cave we've already been in. I'm such an idiot. Uh, but we did have to clear that extra area out anyway. Which is fine. Because we uh, came out the same way we went in previously. So now we can continue on uh, exploring the outside here. 
Uh, if you restart again, then you'll note that where you've previously explored will still be explored, but the enemies will respawn. So if you need to level up because things are getting harder, then you can always restart and play the same areas again. Well, what we're going to do now is go ahead and select one more skill point into Bursting Round, which will max it out. And then we're going to continue putting points into ranged expertise. Okay, so that uses us. Oh, we've got one more. Yeah, let's put points into there as well. That final point. So we should, by this point, if you're following along with me at level 7, uh, have 10 points into Bursting Round and 4 points into ranged expertise. We're now not going to be spending any further points until we get to level 10. We're going to be saving them for our next class. But that's fine, because those passive skills we've currently invested in will be more than sufficient uh, to take through, take us through to level 10. As you can see here, we're just going through it all, aren't we, really easily. Right, so Pharos is one of the enemies we need to kill here. So, our normal bullets won't do a lot of damage to him, but once we proc our passive, look at that. We took about half his health off in a single hit there. And we get the awesome loot, of course. Uh, anything we can equip, or anything we care to equip. Yeah, I think we'll go for the eight cunning. Cunning is one of the useful stats for this particular build, as you've probably noticed already, we've already had to invest points into it uh, for the gear that we want to wear. But just keep investing points into Cunning and uh, Physique, and that should see you good. So by the time you get to level 100, which is the level cap, you'll want about half your points in Physique and half in Cunning. You might need a few in Spirit as well. But that isn't necessary, depending on the gear that you get. So let's explore over this side. Ah, oh, so many quests to do now. Ah, because this cave isn't on the map, I believe it's uh, just an optional secret cave. Might not spawn for you. This is Putrid Den. Or if it does spawn, it might spawn in a different location. Uh, Putrid Den can be quite challenging. There's a lot of poison in this place, especially off the boss. Though I recommend clearing it if you're able. Uh, the boss in particular should drop some nice items. Whether it'll be stuff we can use, I'm not sure. But I'm hoping for maybe a one-handed gun of some kind. To make sure you make good use of your potions. Stay out of the poison as much as possible. This is by far the hardest encounter you'll have to have faced so far. Come on, get those blocks going, will you? Oh, that's better. Bit unlucky on the skill box there. And what do we get? A few bits. Shield, which is nice. But obviously not for us since we're dual wielding. Ah, scrap. Remember, we need five of those. So we now have three. Honestly, guys, you'll be playing this game and time will run away from you, so just make sure you keep an eye on it if you have any appointments or anything. Yeah, if you've not experienced Grim Dawn before, but you enjoy games like Diablo, then I strongly recommend it. I really do. And it's improved so much since it was first released, and it wasn't a bad game then. But if you haven't checked it out for a while, then uh, you might wish to do so. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love just how everything dies 
once that clock goes off. See? Awesome. Awesome stuff. And looks like we're going to be leveling again soon. Though, remember we're saving our points now. Until level 10. And that's because I want a nice healthy amount of points once we unlock the soldier class to start investing into the skills there. In fact, we're going to be staying with the soldier class for some time now. Now that we've maxed out, uh, what is it? Bursting round here. And don't be scared to use your iron bits as well, guys, if you can afford any upgrades, especially for weapons. That's what it's there for, to spend. Uh, let's just stay over on this side for the time being. Explore the edge of the map and then we'll head back towards the centre, I think. Yeah, don't forget, exploring is your friend in this game. Especially because it's not always obvious where you have to go for quests. The quests themselves will tend to tell you which area. But you're on your own then. There's no, like, pointers on the map unless you get really close. Plus, as you saw, there's other quests that just start out in the wild as well. When we rescued that guy, there was nothing to tell us that he was going to be there. Right, so this shiny stuff is chests. Generally, if it's shiny, you can loot it. Hmm, still no upgrades, though. But as I mentioned to you early on, apart from the fact that you want one-handed guns, uh, this particular build isn't really gear-dependent. So, don't worry so much if you're not seeing upgrades or that regular. As you can see, we've been quite unlucky with gear drops so far. But we're still blitzing our way through here. Grab the components. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the console version of this game in action. Not sure when that is actually. Might already be out. So just before we cross that bridge, we'll head over to the other side. If there's any secrets I'm aware of as well, guys, I'll make sure to point those out to you. Ah, that slit necklace is a quest item. So it's for a quest that we don't have yet. But one of the good things about Grim Dawn is that you can actually get quest items even before you've picked up the required quests. And if you actually manage to get all of the quest items necessary, by the time you pick a quest up, you can hand it in immediately. Save messing around. So another secret cave here that doesn't have... Um, an icon on the map. Which means this cave itself will spawn for you. But it might not be where it spawned for me. So just keep an eye out as you're exploring until you come across it. Another lore book. So we'll read that for the experience. Ah, more scrap. Only one more scrap needed, and we can get that quest handed in. 
So a chest we missed? Yeah. Oh no, it was a meal. Okay, so that recovers your health. Over here we have another dude we can rescue. This is Jasper. And we're going to select the Rift Gate option. And our final piece of scrap as well. Uh, looked like we looted an amulet there, so I don't think we've got one of those equipped. Just kill these enemies, and then we'll check that out. Yeah, so that's the amulet we have equipped at the moment. 5% less damage for materials, which uh, kind of sucks. So let's go ahead and replace it. Head back out the cave. Oh, I'm so happy to be playing this game again. I remember when I live streamed it as well, some of you guys are watching then and uh, asked when I was going to come back to it, well here we go. But yeah, decided to start again since it had been a while and there have been various changes and whatnot to the game since I last played myself. Oh, there's definitely something satisfying about that, where that skill triggers and everything just dies. Okay, we've already gone that way, so we won't repeat it. Let's just zoom out a little bit of the map here. Wow, look how much we've done already today. So, we've got another rift gate here, but this one's a special one. Um, it won't activate immediately. For the first time that we want to use it, we do have to kill the enemies around it. Now, once we have used it, it will stay active and we won't have to do this again. But just for that first time, we do need to clear out these foes. Another piece of scrap, which we don't actually need, really. But not for the quest anyway. Scrap is useful for repairing other things throughout the game. Uh, let's head back to town at this point. We'll go ahead and sell our stuff. All the weapons that, that we looted. And we'll click this button to see if there's any components we can complete. There isn't. Uh, so we can go ahead and just sort all our loot out neatly using this button here we've got four and a half thousand gold coins sorry iron bits even so is there anything we can buy that's going to be helpful yeah this item would be this gun plus 12 damage in our off hand plus 14 damage in our off hand for even less money let's go for that and we'll head over here speak to barnabas tell him we got the scrap Pick up his next quest. Uh, we can head down into the trapdoor there. We'll do that, I think, in the next episode for a quest. And I think that's pretty much everything for now. Yep, I'm happy that it is. Okay then, guys. So we'll take a break at this point. Uh, next time we're going to level to 10, we're going to head down to the trap door and we'll start uh, putting points into our next skill tree. And that will complete, you know, the class selection at that point. We'll become a tactician by then. And you guys are really going to see the power of this particular build in action. So make sure you come back, check that out. Hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. Uh, big shout out and thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon uh, or as a YouTube member. That means so much. 
And if you want to check out more videos on the channel, you can do that right now. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.